Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the Gold Coast edition of the Village Law SEQFC preview show. My name is Darren Lutton and we've got two guests with us today from Football Gold Coast. We've got Mark Madge. G'day Mark. Hey Darren, how are you? Good. good. And our special guest today is uh, coach of Narang. It's Lee Vernon. G'day Lee, how are you? Good and yourself? Very well, thank you. Great to have you on. Your first time on the show. It is. Um, we'll be gentle with you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your year. You guys are going really well in second place, Mark. Yeah, we, we'd like a little bit more of a, a run of wins. You know, we sort of got off uh, to a good start with a couple of wins and then we lost to Kingscliff. Um, and then we won a couple more games and then we just uh, had a draw against Musgrave and a, a loss against Surfers. So we're a little bit stop start. So we're looking to uh, get on a bit of a roll now and hopefully uh, string a few wins back to back. For sure. All right. So let's uh, head straight into the weekend's results. And you had a 2-0 loss on the weekend against Surface Paradise, yeah? 3-2. 3-2. 3-2 loss, yeah. Tell us about it. Look, I mean, obviously, Surfers are a good team. Everyone everyone knows that. I thought we gave a pretty good account of ourselves. Um, the guys showed plenty of ticker. We came from a goal down and 2-1 down as well. Got it back to 2 all just after half time, And I thought we had a little bit of momentum going in... Uh, couple of sort of crucial injuries sort of just took the stuffing out of us and uh, a little bit disappointed not to come away with, with some, some share of the points, but um, our surfers are a very good team. So uh, they're, they're rightly up the top of the ladder where they deserve to be. Mark, I'm going to ask you this question with Lee joining us. Yep. Was there a, a quality difference between the two teams? Not really, to be honest. I mean, game was scrappy, I think, uh, for both, I think both can agree, you know, it was, it was a different kind of game. It was more physical than, than previous games. And I wrote, you know, in the bulletin and I said in the podcast last week, one of the two teams that I believe have the chance to beat them are Narang and Palm Beach. I still stick by that. Um, you know, uh, Narang did have patches of play for large portions of the game where they were the, the better side. Um, surface will always create chances. Everyone knows that. Um, it's just about limiting their opportunities and taking them out of their comfort zone. And that's what, you know, Lee and the boys did very well um, and it showed there for the 90 minutes. And, you know, if the points were shared, if Narang came away with the win, I don't think anyone could say, you know, that that's not a fair result. Lee, there's a six-point gap now between a new and top place. At this stage of the season, you're going to need some something to happen for you to reclaim that top spot. Some results. Yeah, look, to I think top, top spot, six points, it's, it's the same as seven points with their goal difference. So, um, yeah. So to be honest, as I, as I mentioned before the show, I think we're looking now from us all the way through to Palm Beach is a bit of a log jam of teams looking to get into that second spot and really secure a good run in through the finals. And um, that's what we'll be looking to do, get on a little bit of a roll over the next few weeks and hopefully uh, put a bit of a gap on some of those teams just below us. What's the difference between your squad this year and last Not a lot of difference. Um, last year we had a season unlike I've ever had in my 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 coaching uh, time uh, just with injuries. We, we had an appalling run of injuries last year. Um, and, and this year, much the same sort of squad. Maybe a, a, we've had a couple of players come in, a couple of players go out, but just a, a touch more depth. And it just adds to the intensity at training, everyone fighting for spots. And I think that's really been the main difference. Uh, I also think that we've probably got a little bit more resilience this year. Um, second year, we, we had a lot of older guys last year and a lot of uh, young, really young guys and trying to mesh them together and you know, trying to get both sides to sort of buy into what we're trying to achieve at the club. And uh, this year it's happened a lot, a lot smoother, I think. Um, we've had a few games early on and quite a lot of games this season where we've gone behind and managed to come back and, and, and get points or, or get a win. And, and that wasn't happening last season either. Mark, I'll run through the, the weekend's results and you can speak to whichever ones you like, really. So uh, Runaway Bay uh, went down 1-0 to Palm Beach. Broadbeach United had a 3-1 win over Musgrave. That was a, a big game. Burley, 1-0 over Kingscliff. Southport, 5-0 over Rabina. Yeah, we'll touch on all a little bit briefly. I won't sit and bore everyone. Uh, Ronald Bay put up a wall against Palm Beach and it worked very well. Um, Palm Beach had a missed penalty in the first half. If that goes in, things might have been a bit different. But, you know, to only go down 1-0 against the full-strength Palm Beach team, so all their players were back. Um, that, was the, that was the best team that they, they could put out um, from their squad. And, you know, took until the sixth minute of the 60th 
uh, 65th minute there to score a goal and, and, you know, a bit of late drama almost got Runaway Bay an equaliser. So, you know, Nathan sat in, sat, uh, played, you know, defensive from the outset, um, which is obviously what I think they needed to do. And they, you know, put up a, a great fight and it shows that, you know, similar like we spoke about with the Southport result against Surface, it's hard for amateur players to break down um, teams that come out in that defensive set. So, you know, um, that they couldn't penetrate as much as they probably should have. Uh, but, you know, again, three points for Palm Beach and a big three points going forward. Uh, Broadbeach, Musgrave, we weren't at that game. Um, but again, a massive three points for Broadbeach. That puts them now into the third spot. Um, so they've had a bit of a, you know, you look at some of their some of their games, some tight results there. That loss against Runaway Bay, obviously the unexpected one. So, you know, their season um, has taken a turn for the positive in the recent weeks, especially with two massive home wins. Again, I fear for the away part of their season. I, I don't think oh, – I think they've played one away game, if, if that, um, for the whole season. So they've got a lot of tough, tough away trips to come in the second round in the middle of winter. So for them, keeping that role going will be, be crucial. Burley, Kingscliff, um, I mean, Kingscliff just couldn't score. It was one of those days they hit the post and did absolutely everything. And Burley, Burley played, played very well. Um, Christian Rees came back in, organised them, um, you know, from the outset. And you could see that, that just someone there at the back with a, you know, experienced mind to, to structure everything and to give instructions was very helpful for them. And again, you know, you can keep saying every week, three points, massive three points on the line each and every game because it is, um, you know, all, all these games come down to that. Uh, and these are points to this part of the season that you can look back on and say, well, that's the reason why we're in the final spot or that's the reason why we're not there. And then Southport Rubina, you know, it was nil all at halftime. Uh, Rubina did very well for 45 minutes. And then in, in the first minute and a half of the second half, Southport go and score. Morgan Saunders, grab, Morgan Saunders grabs four, even though he probably didn't have the best first half. Even he said that in his post game. Um, but four goals, three points for them um, after having not played for a couple of weeks and having two... Uh, losses with one being Lee's Narang beating them at home uh, and then Lions. So again, it is an absolute, it'll be musical chairs, I think now for the remainder of the season between those, you know, or hopefully for not for Lee's sake, but between second, third, all the way down to eighth. Um, it could be absolutely anything each week. So looking at the latter, Surface Paradise have a, a six point gap on, on 19 points, Narang on 13, Broadbeach 12, Southport, Kingscliff and Musgrave on 10. Southport game in hand. Yeah. Uh, Burley Heads on 9, Palm Beach on 7, Runaway Bay 6 and Rabina still yet to register a point. And Lee, this weekend you are taking on Rabina. Tell us about that game. How are you going to prepare for a side that, that, that hasn't won a game? They've only scored five goals in their first seven games. I mean, seeded 39. Well, how many players have they signed this week, Mark? Well, I know there's definitely at least five coming in. So, yeah. yeah, when I looked at the draw, and obviously they had a, a, a loss of quite a few players last season, I was hoping to get them in the first couple of rounds. And uh, I knew that they would certainly um, be stronger by the end of the round and, and sign a few players. And that appears to be the case. So, uh, we'll go out there expecting a, a tough game. And, um, you know, as I said before, we need to bounce back from uh, one point in two games ourselves. So, I'll be the focus. Looking at the other games, Kingscliff are taking on Broadbeach, Musgrave against Southport, Runaway Bay against Surfers, and Palm Beach take on Burley Heads. Lee, which game sticks out for you there? Uh, look, I, I think they all do, to be honest. I mean, all teams are involved. Surfers, uh, Runaway Bay probably won't have a huge effect on us as far as Surfers being up near the top. Um, I think it's the rest of the guys that are playing for that second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth all playing each other. You know, there's, there's three games you could pick there. As Mark said before, I think Southport have got a game in hand, so uh, I wouldn't mind seeing them drop some points. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mark? I think Lee said it perfectly. I mean, those three games, you can literally flip a coin for all three. Um, I mean, at this point in the season, you've got Burley, who've just crept quietly to nine points with a game in hand against Southport. So one of them get, a, get all three points there. They're right behind Lee, you know, in third place. So it's, you know, absolutely anything can happen. Um, out of the three, Palm Beach Burley sticks out for me. I think this is going to be a, a crucial one for both. Um, obviously, all of them crucial, but I think if Palm Beach can get a win here, we'll start talking a bit more about them 
into that top four. And if they make the top four, anything can happen. We obviously know the quality that they have. Um, so in, in that aspect, I think come six o'clock Friday night, uh, Saturday night at Palm Beach, that's the one that I'm looking at as being more crucial than the other three. Um, just basically because if Burley does get a, a result there and things, you know, eventuate how they eventuate, Palm Beach could face themselves with a bit of work to do come the second round to get even into the top four. Uh, you know, obviously having a three-point deduction hurts them, whereas we'd have four teams on 10 points. So it shows you that that strength there in, in the middle part. Um, but again, going to Kingscliff on a Friday night at 10 past eight won't be too pleasant, I think, for a lot of teams, especially Broadbeach. So it'll be tough, tough, tough games. Just speaking of Kingscliff, it's been suggested to me during the week that they haven't had the rub of the green so far this season. In what aspect? Oh, they just had a, a few decisions that are, are crucial decisions that have gone against them. And this wasn't from their coach. I'm very good. I, I get along with Ross really well. Um, and he'll love me saying this. Every team doesn't have decisions that go well against them. I mean, if you look at their games, um, you know, the ones that they've lost, second half against Musgrave, they got outplayed to the max and lost 4-1. They beat Lee when Lee was up 2-1 and at that point, Narang went at their fittest and they had him trained for a long time and had to, not, not pissing anyone's pocket, but he had to take three of his better plays off within 55, 60 minutes. Um, so you had to play the, you know. So I know Rossi won't like it, but that doesn't sit well with me. Score goals, finish your chances and then um, you won't be in any, you know, you won't be in the position of having to wait for a decision or anything like that. That's the way I look at it, maybe a bit too. To, it to was from an independent observer, I might add. So, fair enough. Anyways, uh, but I'm, I'm loving this uh, little spikiness to you now, Mark. It's great. Uh, I think I got to a point now. I don't really care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. You can't be. Yeah, you can't just sit and just nod all the time. So, <laughs> and just on that, we now turn to the Coast League. And for those of you at home, I was actually contacted by the, the president of Legends FC after last week's uh, little spray there by Mark, and. Uh, they wanted, to Positive. they wanted to get in contact with Mark so that they could give him a shirt. He's asked for yep. it and he will receive. So oh, yeah. well done, Mark. Um, any car dealers out there? I could go a new car. That'd be nice. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. Right. Not Tell us run. about the Coast League, Mark. I mean, Legends got another two wins since we last spoke. So they beat Mudgy on the weekend and they go and beat Pacific Pines on the Tuesday and yeah, I mean, there's no, I, I, one team to watch is actually Narang, funny enough, their Coast League, which I'm sure Lee will be able to add a bit in there because I don't know too much about them from looking at their squad, very young, a lot of AFA Academy boys that haven't, you know, stepped into that first or reserves team. So they're in a bit of a roll now into the top four. Um, <clears throat> come the second half of the season, the production line that Narang obviously have with the AFA, you know, the players coming through, that could be one to watch um, there. And Talabadra keep winning. They've got you know, a lot of good players, experienced players. Um, but you can't really fault legends. I mean, when you keep putting points on the board, uh, there's not much you can say. Uh, one, of the type, one of the challenges I thought would give everyone a run towards the top, Tweed, losing to Narang over the weekend. So, you know, that puts them in a bit of a harder position now um, to, to try to get some more points and traction to legends. From what I've been told by their president in our great conversation, they're keen to go to the Premier League if that opportunity arises so I was a bit surprised to hear it but you know they if they own the right they deserve the right to play so there you go all right Lee tell us about this uh this coast league team so this would be your your third level team is that right uh yeah not necessarily coast league should in theory rank higher than premier league reserves but it's it's there or thereabouts but um yeah very young team um both them and the reserves very well coached, very enthusiastic and probably mainly made up of AFA um, players as well. So it's, it's, it's a good production line for, from a club point of view. Uh, we've been a little, little bit un, unlucky. We've had uh, a few double headers where we've got obviously two fields next to each other where both teams in both grades were playing at the same time, trying to maximise the crowds. But as of uh, so far, one's been washed out with uh, with rain and one's been washed out with council uh, doing a job on our pitch. So it uh, hasn't happened yet, but I'm sure it'll be good when we uh, when we have uh, have that later in this in the season. We've only had the one home game so far. So 
I well got pl- plenty to uh, plenty to play in, in round two. But um, every, everything's pretty enthusiastic about the Coast League. I mean, obviously, um, when you start a team from scratch, numbers and uh, a little bit thin on the ground to start off with. But they're building each week, and um, you know they only lost by by the goal to to Talabadra and also a goal to the Legends. So um, they've played the two top teams already. So hopefully they can get on a bit of a roll as well. How uh, deep is your involvement with this team? Of, of course, you're, you're coaching the top side. Do, do they all train as, as a group or are they three teams that, that train independently from each other? No, we, we train with the reserves and the Coast League train on their own as well on the, on the other field. But because they're obviously got a lot of academy, they t- train at a different time as well. Um, so there's not a, a huge involvement. Um, obviously, at the start of the season, I was pretty passionate that we had a Coast League team, so I was involved in that. But the guys, um, especially from the AFA, Gary and Shane and, and Jono, have done a great job pulling the numbers together, and they're pretty much running that themselves and doing a good job of it. So excuse my ignorance on that, but the AFA, who are they? Uh, the football Australian Football Academy that's been running out of Narang for, what would this be, Mark, 10 years now? Yeah, at least, that's, yeah, guaranteed eight, nine at least. Probably yeah, 10. and the production line of players that are now playing Premier League, NPL, overseas, professionally is, is very, very impressive. So, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, uh, certainly one of the reasons I went to Narang in the first place. And are they privately run? Uh, like like all academies with all, all clubs, is I suppose there's a, a, an affiliation there, but it's, it, is, it is privately run to a point. Um, it's very, very much Narang though. Very passionate Narang. All their, all their gears Narang. So, um, but, but yeah, look, it's certainly something the club takes a fair bit of pride in, in, in the success that the AFA have had. And finally, how, how far back do they go? I mean, do they take on five-year-olds, or where, where does it start with them? Yeah, it does. It starts very, very young. Um, again, like all academies do, and they've got different levels and different structures that they run through. So. Um, certainly, if you anyone want, is interested to go into the the club website and get all the all the details there, but yeah, pretty much under fives, under six, I believe they start, or they're looking to start at that sort of age. Very good. All right. Now uh, let's look at the Coast League fixtures this weekend, Mark. Um, I have got Musgrave up against Tel- Musgrave up against Talbadra, Tambourine Mountain against Palm Beach, Pack Pines against Narang, Tweed United against Legends, and Ormo against Raby Runaway Bay. Yeah, I mean, um, roll on. I, I think Talabudra, you know, should be good to keep the pressure up on Legends against Musgrave. Um, you know, they've, they've, they've got quality players, experienced but quality players. If you still have Matt Hilton in your team, I mean, you're, you're going to score goals and you're going to be up there and thereabouts. Legends versus Tweed's an interesting one. Playing at Tweed could prove to be its challenges for Legends, but I've said that week in, week out, and nothing's challenged them so far, so... Um, I've got all the confidence in my boys and legends to get three points there and continue their search to the top. I can't wait till I get that shirt. Um, and then the rest, I mean, you know, you can flip a coin. Going up to Tambourine's pretty hard. Um, I was up there for their field unveiling. Uh, the Brett Arthur field up there after one of their community members. And it's actually a brand new field laid by the community there, but all sponsored by one of the turf supplies up in the mountain. It's actually pristine. So it was that weekend where we had a lot of storm, a lot of rain, and they played and it was perfect. So, um, you know, interesting trip up there, the tambourine and the rest, you know, Coast League is a mixed bag this year. There's not really much to expect, you know, either way, um, a- anything can really happen. So, you know, Narang have a, a tough trip to Pack Pines, but, you know, those young boys, I'm sure will be up for it and be able to run around and, and dance around them to another three points. Excellent. All right, so that's our wrap of the week. Lee, before we go, just might uh, ask you about your experience moving from, from Broad Beach to Narang. Tell us about it. What have, uh, what have been the, 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 the experiences that you've had? How are the two clubs different? Oh, put me on the spot there. Um, you know, certainly at Broad Beach, I was a lot more hands-on. I had a number of roles on the committee and I'd been there, a life member, so... Uh, to go to a new club, new people, new setup, new academy, I was a little bit, uh, a little bit nervous. But um, Narang's been excellent. Um, you know, really, really good people there. Um, support's been good. Behind the scenes has been good. Um, the the young players coming through has been sort of a breath of fresh air. I had a lot of older players at at Broadbeach. But in saying that, um, the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, a lot of the 
that is is quite similar. I mean, it's no it's no secret. Obviously, the the first grade team from Broadbeach came over to Narang with me, so um, you know, seeing the same faces, the same familiarity familiarity there um you know same coaching style all, all that all that sort of was was pretty much a, a plug-in so um the coaching side of it wasn't you know as daunting as going to a new club with a whole new playing squad good stuff all right lee thanks for being on the show today hopefully we'll get you back in future weeks we'll let you go for a swim now <laughs> thanks mate appreciate it and mark uh, anything else we need to bring up before we wrap up the show Nothing. Um, I mean, you know, a couple of big weeks coming up. We've got the President's Cup, which it looks like I'm not going to put tickets on Narang, but it looks like it'll be surface Narang again. Um, I think surface mathematically can't finish lower than second. And as Lee said, if they lose both their games and Narang win both their games, they're going to have to win by margins of 12 in both. Um, could be possible. I mean, the results that are coming in, you never know. Uh, so I, I think we're destined for surface Narang in the President's Cup. You've got, you know, a busy schedule um, with the FFA Cup games on the Gold Coast and all the catch-up games. So, again, it's a great time to be part of football. Um, you know, keep an eye out, head down to games. There's a great crowd at Narang's surface as well, considering there was the local MPL derby at the same time. Um, I actually think it was a pretty good crowd uh, that came to that one and all the other games as well. So continue to support football um, and, yeah, let's roll on. Good stuff. We might talk about uh, the Gold Coast MPL clubs in next week's show, so we'll uh, keep an eye out for that. All right, Mark, thank you for your time today. And Lee, no again, thank you. This has been the Village Law SEQFC preview show. We will see you next week.